Hello, hello, this is M. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to have uh, an overview about the options that we have in the data menu in Excel. And uh, we are going to touch or touch base the main options that we have under this menu without entering too much into the details of the most complex functionalities that we have here. So please keep in mind that this will be an overview about the menu options and for the dive deep uh, of some of these, uh, these uh, functionalities, uh, please do watch the dedicated videos. So let's move ahead and let's uh, try to have um, an overview about what we have here. What I did previously was to go into the home menu, then to the analyze data option and to add some sample, sample data. So this is what I have here. Then at the data menu level, we have some uh, main categories, which are get and transform data, queries and connections, data types, sort and filter, data tools, forecast and outline. So we are going to have an overview about the get and transform data. We are going to better understand what are the queries and connections that we have in, uh, in Excel. Then for the data types, we will see what they are, but without entering into too many details, how to sort and filter in Excel. For the data tools, we will uh, have uh, a quick practical, practical application about what we can do here with some of the actions uh, without entering into the data models or the pivot, uh, power pivot options. Um, and for the forecast and uh, what if analysis, again, please do watch the dedicated videos. So let's move ahead and start with the very first one, which is the get and transform data. So from the get data, you have the overall option or some shortcuts, sort of shortcuts at the menu level. So you, I would recommend you to go to get data and then to choose the data source that you have, which might be a different workbook, might be a text or CSV document, XML, and so on and so forth. So you have that offline data, one file data, or you can have your Excel connected to a database that might be linked to a server, uh, might be uh, linked to an access document, might be, um, different types of data sources or even the um, Microsoft resources. So the, the Microsoft Azure, you, you also can use, of course, the, uh, the Microsoft server. You have also some other data ranges uh, from, from a simple database, open source database, from uh, queries, and so on and so forth. Please keep in mind that depending on your, your um, version of Excel, you might also have different options like the online services that could be uh, additional data sources that you can use. Then uh, you can see also your existing connections. What are your existing connections? If you had, for instance, a connection to a database, to an external document, any kind of data source, that connection would have shown here. What we have today is only a table. So among the tables, you can find that table one. And if you want to double check if that's actually the table one, what you can do is simply to go on the table. The table design option will show here. You click on it and it will show that it's actually the table one. So we don't have any connections. We only have one table, which is called table one. Moving ahead with queries and connections, the very first option is the refresh options that you have. And for the refresh options, what we mainly have are uh, refreshing the pivot tables and the data queries. The pivot tables, you can watch the video related to how to insert a pivot table and using that refresh or refresh all that will update your pivot table that will 
update your overview on what you have at the, at the pivot uh, level. And then the queries and connections. The queries are in fact um, dedicated databases that you have uh, that you have and you can customize. So for instance, what you can do with a query is to uh, take a set of raw data from a data source and then only to use the columns or the rows that you are interesting with, interested with or you can format the data that you have at the query level just to facilitate your functionalities and to automate in in some way your excel book so please do watch the queries dedicated uh, video to see how to create a query how a query works and why it's it's uh, it's a benefit for us to run queries in some situations then for the data types what we have here we have uh, some financial, geographical, well-being, uh, different types of, um, of options that can allow us, for instance, if we take the stocks, that will allow us to uh, link our workbook with some uh, stock information, for instance, to convert the numbers, the results that we have at the workbook book level with the stock market um, shares acronyms we can we can uh, uh, get the, the data about the prices the current value and so on and so forth so please do watch the dedicated video for the data types but for today we are only uh, looking to the fact that we can link to different types of external data sources links uh, in in many cases on what we have in the excel workbook then moving ahead with the uh, sort and filter. In sort of and filter, what we can do is to sort the data. And as we can see, we have here 2017, 2015. We have components, bikes, uh, we have chains, stocks, beep shorts, and so on and so forth. And 20,000, 3,000, and so on and so forth. So we can choose at the level that we want to sort them so let's say that we want to have a sort by category we don't want anymore to have a random set of data what we can do is to simply click on our table go to sort and keep in mind that that's for the moment grayed out my data has headers because we have a dynamic table and we can go to the category and say we want to have it one to z a to z and here we have the categories sorted in an alphabetical order. Or we might want to see the cells and we can sort it by cells. Let's say we want to see the largest to smallest, click OK. And now we have a sort by, by, uh, uh, by cells. So we can di um, do different types of, of sorting and we can also filter the data as we wish so we can tick on tick the options that we have um, we can sort by color if we have different colors at the table lab level uh, level sorry and um, yeah we we can play with with sorting as much as we want if we didn't have a dynamic table but a set of raw data Let's go here to A1, press and keep pressed on Control Shift, right and down arrow. Everything is selected. Let's copy it, move ahead on the top, and then on the H, right click and paste as values. If you do exactly the same thing to sort the data, you can see that my data has headers is no longer graded out. So being a set of raw data, Excel is not sure if we have a header or not. In our case, we have it. So what you can do is the tick, my data has headers. You can see that this is unselected, but this is okay because this means that Excel is not going to sort your header, but only the data, the rows that you have. And we can do exactly the same thing. So to go to cells, largest, smallest, click OK, and we have exactly the, the same thing. 
or if we want to sort back the categories control shift right down arrow sort change to category a to z click ok and we have the categories so that's the unique difference between a dynamic table and the so uh, a set of row data you might have the header automatic or uh, manually choose the same for the for the filter if you want to filter something you can simply go on that range and click on the filter and the filter symbols will show here like we had here by default in the dynamic table if you you don't want to have the filters then you can click here the same here and you will have no longer the filters and for the advanced filtering what you can do is to filter and copy data if you want to uh, using different parameters you can only filter by unique records only meaning that you might want to uh, take the unique uh, data and to filter that one so if you need to use also the advanced filter in some cases might be very useful then we have the text to columns what is text to columns uh, let's look back to let's say we we take that um, that uh, row data table row, row data information sorry not table but information uh, and we can see here that we have one to three words and we want to split those words by a separator what's the separator that we have here it's the space what you can notice is that we have a space in different cases might be for instance the name then a comma then uh, the age another comma and the sales results for instance in that case the separator would be comma but in our case we have the space and what you can do is to add here one and two so we have a maximum of three words then um, select that column click on text to columns and that window will pop up with the two options in our case we have a, a defined separator that we can use we can use the space and to separate the data so we can go on the dim, uh, delimited go next then we change from tab to space and as soon as we put here space, you can see that Excel automatically recognizes what we have uh, separated by space. We can click next. We have an overview. It's general data. It's not text. It's not a date. It's not something specific. So we can simply click on finish. And now we have everything separated by columns. So that could be an automation that you can use without having to manually write here or split the data at the columns level then we have the flash fill and let's say that for a flash fill we want to add here a new column test and here to say that we want to have uh, tires double M okay then we go to the next row and we click on flash fill and you can see that what the flash fill did was to take lights tights bike everything that we did excel understood that i was taking the very first word and adding a double m to that word and by clicking on the flash fill it automatically populated the data as i wanted to so that might be useful when you need to repeat some actions and you don't want to do it manually mainly if you have a dynamic table i would recommend you to create a dynamic table if you want to create it uh, we are not going to refer to the insert video where we created the tables we are going to review only very quickly i'm pressing ctrl shift right 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 down arrow everything is selected i'm pressing on control and keeping rest and t from table my table has headers i need to tick that one and press ok and now i have the table too 
And this is how you create your own dynamic table with the old menu. So um, I would recommend you to, to leverage as much as possible the dynamic tables. And then for the flash fill also in many, many cases, it will, it will be done automatically. Uh, but if it's not done automatically, you can simply present to Excel what you want to do and then click on the flash fill and uh, Excel will replicate it. Let's move ahead with, uh, with uh, the duplicates, what we can have under the duplicates. For instance, we have here accessories, 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 and we only want to take one criteria, one category at once. Please keep in mind that by removing duplicates, Excel is not going to consolidate our data. It's not going to create a sort of a pivot table to show you the total sales for accessories but it will only remove everything that is duplicated. So let's sort it back to the um, category A to Z and click OK. And we can see that that's uh, in the Excel perception a duplicate. We have duplicates categories. If we go anywhere on the table and we click on remove duplicates, we can unselect everything and only select the category ticket, press OK. And now we have only a very few categories which are not duplicated anymore. And that will facilitate us uh, our creation of a data validation. If you need to create a data validation, let's say that you want to have those categories shown as a data validation option, we can go here or anywhere that you would like to create your data validation, click on the data validation, choose a list in our case, because we want to build the list or the drop down list for some values. We click on the arrow, upper arrow, then we select the range. What we want to have is those categories shown as data validation options, down arrow and okay. And now we have, which is not a filter, but a data validation options in Excel. For uh, the consolidation, what we have is to consolidate data from multiple resources into a single uh, output range. So uh, the, for the consolidation, the relationships, which is linked to the, uh, to the data sources and how it's already a sort of uh, uh, database connection or uh, relationship management for, for data references, please do watch the dedicated video. And as I was mentioning at the beginning, the managed data model is linked with the Power Pivot, uh, which gives you the opportunity to create your KPIs, your measurements, everything that you need, mainly from a business perspective, and then to interpret the data uh, from that specific perspective. And the same happens with what if and the forecast options that allows you to create different scenarios for what you want to have to add some criteria, to make an estimate based on some historical data and to create your own forecast. So please do watch the dedicated videos for those uh, functions because that's a bit more complex and would uh, go over our main topic today, which is simply an overview about the, the data menu. For uh, moving ahead to the outline, uh, outline options, the subtotal will allow you to create a subtotal. So it's quite self explanatory when you have a grand total and subtotal. So you can quickly create your subtotals. But for the grouping and ungrouping, that might be useful when you have multiple columns, for instance, let's say that you want to have this data, but not to have it shown always. So you can simply go from the first to the last column, and either right click and hide it. And then to unhide it, you can manually take it like this, or you can simply select the previous and next column, right click and select unhide. Or what you can do to have a quick and easy access 
uh, that might be also a more visual approach of your your data let's imagine that you have 100 columns for instance and not all of them are are critical for your primary overview you can select all of them and then go to group and that minus sign will show here that minus sign will be would mean to compress the data or expand it so you can choose how the data will be shown and that you can as you can see instead of hiding and unhiding data you can play a lot of grouping and you can can create multiple groups per multiple columns keeping in mind that you need to have one separator column because if you group that one too that will expand your grouping but if you create a new grouping here that will be a separate grouping and you can have for instance two groups you can do exactly the same for the rows for instance let's say that i want to group that part and then so i'm selecting the rows click on grouping group and that will group my rows also if i want to expand them i can click on the plus signs and that's it if you need to ungroup something then you can simply take everything click on group and that's now ungrouped so you can delete the grouping at any time by using the ungroup function thank you so much for watching this video please do like it and subscribe to my channel if you have any kind of question or comment please comment below have a perfect day ahead see you around bye bye